Welcome back, everybody, to the Cleveland Guardians franchise here on MLB The Show 22. Today's episode, oh boy, is it a big one. We have made it to the year one trade deadline, and our Guardians are in a very interesting position. Currently at 53-53, and 53, we're 500, we're smack dab in the middle of the standings, and we pretty much have flexibility on how we want to manage this trade deadline. We're not bad enough to where we have to sell. We're not good enough to where we have to buy. It's sort of a pick-your-own-adventure, in a sense. We can sell off some veterans to get some prospects and focus on the rebuild. We can go out and get some bona fide veterans to help us make a wild card spot. So we have a lot of choices on what we can do. We're 53 and 53, eighth in the American League currently, and I think as it stands, we would be a long shot to make the postseason. So we would really need to do something drastic, in my opinion, to make it. I don't think it makes sense to go all out for a playoff spot here. This is year one of a rebuild. We don't need to rush it. However, I'm not opposed to getting good major league contributors today. We've made three deals so far in this series, acquiring some prospects I like, such as Dustin Harris, Kevin Alcantara, Joan Adon, Julio Pablo Martinez, but we haven't really gotten an opportunity to fully make this roster our own yet because we've kept the Major League team for the most part pretty much intact and the farm system hasn't added any major prospects, but we have a great opportunity to really shake things up today and make this our team in a sense. So as it stands, we have three star level players, Bieber, Ramirez, and Klasse. I don't see myself trading either of those three today. We also don't have any old players to move on. We only have two players above the age of 30. It's Luke Maley and Anthony Ghost. Neither of them are very good. So I want to look at impending free agents, and Austin Hedges is an interesting one. Hedges has had a good season offensively for his standards. He's a great defensive player as well, so I think maybe trading him could be an interesting idea. I want to keep my eye on the trade block here as well. There are some interesting names there who we could certainly look out for. So I wanted to trade Austin Hedges. This has really been my plan all along. I think we can get some value for an elite defensive catcher who hasn't been a total liability at the plate this year. The San Francisco Giants are an interesting team because they are currently tied for the second wildcard spot in the National League, and they kind of need a catcher. Kirk Casale has been okay, and Joey Bart has been disappointing. Since Austin Hedges is only on a one-year contract, Joey Bart can still be viewed as the long-term catcher, and this move really wouldn't hinder his development. So I wanted to look at some prospects who we could possibly get from them, and I think two of them make sense. The first one is outfielder Elliot Ramos. We had Ramos last year in our Orioles franchise. He was a very fun player. He was a fan favorite, but I really think he makes sense for us here. I really like his skill set, and I think it would be appropriate value to move Austin Hedges for a guy like Elliot Ramos. If we don't want to get a guy who we already have used a lot on this channel, we could go for Franklin Labor instead, who's a little bit better, but doesn't quite have Ramos's upside. After thinking about it a little bit, I'm really going back here towards Elliot Ramos, and I know some might argue that, yeah, it might not be the best idea to use him again because we had him really the entire series last year. But Elliot Ramos was a fan favorite in the Orioles franchise last year. Everybody liked him. And a lot of people who watched this series didn't even see that series. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. So I was able to get this trade. I don't think Hedges for Ramos is totally fair for the Giants. I think we would kind of be fleecing them. So I added a couple of other prospects to spice it up. We're going to send them Gabriel Rodriguez, a talented 20-year-old third baseman, and an outfielder in Petey Holpen, along with Austin Hedges, for Elliot Ramos and Jalen Davis. Davis is 27 years old. He's a 66 overall with C potential. Not all that spectacular, but he develops very well in MLB The Show simulation. They don't need him at right field. They are loaded in the outfield in general with prospects. So I think that's a fair deal, and we're going to make it happen. So Austin Hedges is now a San Francisco Giant. We acquire Elliot Ramos. I'm very excited to get an opportunity to use him again. Hopefully he can develop just like he did in our Orioles franchise last year. And Jalen Davis should be pretty fun too. Now we need some catching depth, however. With Austin Hedges out the door, we need somebody who can replace him. The Padres have a number of solid catchers, and Victor Caratini is sort of the odd man out. Caratini hasn't been all that good this year in the majors and AAA, but I think he's better than Luke Maley. Not that that says a whole lot. So we're going to make this trade here, giving them a couple of prospects, including outfielder Trenton Brooks, who's not spectacular, 
but he is having a good season this year, absolutely raking the ball, hitting 322 with a 932 OPS, along with Connor Pilkington, a 24-year-old left-handed starting pitcher. So not great prospects per se, but I think it's fair for a guy like Caratini, who's 28 years old. He's the third catcher in their organization, and I think he's someone who can be a starter for us. I'm not convinced he'd be the long-term catcher, but he's better than everything we have currently. So after making those two trades, I felt pretty good overall about our deadline, but then I got to thinking a little bit. There was a comment made in the last episode that pretty much pointed out that maybe we should go out and make a win now move because guys like Jose Ramirez and Shane Bieber are not going to want to stick around if we keep playing losing baseball and if this team doesn't make the strides to become a winning culture and a winning organization by making winning moves, then Jose Ramirez is going to want to go when his contract is up and Shane Bieber is going to want to follow. So I sort of took that into consideration and I wanted to take a look at the trade block again and Cattell Marte is really sticking out like a sore thumb to me. Marte is a very interesting player because he's 28 years old. He's fantastic. He's having a great season this year with the Arizona Diamondbacks, but he's a free agent at the end of the year and the Diamondbacks clearly are not keen on paying him long term. Arizona's 47 and 58. They're not going to make the playoffs this upcoming season, but they have plenty of talent in the outfield throughout their farm system. So Marte may be a player they're willing to part with. And since we have made it to trade deadline day, they haven't been able to find any suitors yet. So they're sort of running low on time and they're running low on leverage on what they could get for him. So I took a look at the trade finder and this is a not a bad offer at all. I think it's good value for us, but I decided to make my own trade and I think I found something I kind of like. Oscar Mercado and Zach Plesak to the Diamondbacks for Cattell Barte and Kenyon Middleton. So of the two pieces we're getting rid of, Plesak, in my opinion, is the bigger one. 27 years old, 78 overall starting pitcher with B potential. He's a really good player, and he has really pitched well the past month or so. Three years left on team control. Going into this series, I expected Plesak to be a building block, and he has performed to my expectations. However, in order to get good players, you got to trade good players. And I think of the five starters we have in our rotation, Plesak is probably the worst one in the long term. The Diamondbacks will need some sort of replacement for Marte in the outfield for the immediate future, so that'll be Oscar Mercado, who at one point was a top prospect. He had a great rookie year in 2019, but it just hasn't really worked out the past few seasons in Cleveland, and I think a new home for him could suit him well. So Mercado and Plezak are headed to the Diamondbacks for Cattell Marte and Kenyon Middleton. Middleton had a good season last year in Seattle. He has been phenomenal this season in AAA. He's allowed like two runs in 32 innings or something. So I think he could be an asset for Major League Bullpen. So the deal is done. Cattell Marte is a Cleveland Guardian along with Kenyon Middleton. So this is a huge move for us. We are getting, in my opinion, a player who can be a franchise cornerstone going forward. The only problem, however, as we talked about earlier, is that Barté is a free agent at the end of the season, but we did not make this trade with the intention of this being a rental. Cattell Barté is going to be a long-term piece, in my opinion, and we are going to sign him now. Five years, $76 million, which is the exact contract he got in real life at the beginning of the season from the Diamondbacks. The deal will also be front-loaded, which gives us more flexibility financially towards the end of the contract. So Cattell Marte will be a Cleveland Guardian up until 2027. That's another six seasons until he turns, what, like 34 years old or something? So Marte is going to be sticking around. And while we're on the subject of contract extensions, I want to bring back Emmanuel Classe. I want to lock him up until his team control expires because he is really good and I don't want to have to worry about arbitration with him. So we offered him four years for $11.5 million. He said no. We upped it to $12.5 million. He said yes. So Emmanuel Classe is officially locked up until his sixth year of MLB service, which is another four years after this one. So we're going to make some roster moves here after all of these trades. Jalen Davis and Logan Allen are going to go down to minors and replacing them on the big league roster will be starting pitcher Carlos Vargas, who's had a good year in AAA. He's already on the 40-man roster, and we need somebody to replace Zach Plesak in the pitching rotation. And then Kenyon Middleton as well. He was not already on the 40-man roster, so we made some additional smaller moves there. We brought up Middleton, and bam, there you go. So I think the team's in a good spot. The lineup has gotten better today with the addition of Cattell Barte, who will hit second against righties and lefties. So he's going to hit in front of Jose Ramirez. 
The pitch and rotation did take a hit with no more Zach, please Zach, but the bullpen, in my opinion, got better with the addition of Kenyon Middleton. So, honestly, I think this team is better in the short term, and more importantly, we are better in the long term. So normally I would play a full game here, but I decided to do something a little bit different. With the new acquisition of Marte, I wanted to get used to him doing some player lock. So we're going to player lock three games here. The first one being his debut against the Tampa Bay Rays. Of course, he's hitting second in the order. So this should be a fun opportunity here. Cattell Marte's Cleveland Guardian debut. His first of many games in a Guardian jersey is, of course, he is locked up until the conclusion of Season 6 of this series. Who knows if we'll make it that far. I would imagine we probably will. So we'll get to see pretty much that entire contract of his play out and see how good he can end up being. We beat the Rays in the last episode, snapping their lawn win streak, hoping to turn it into a losing streak as it's Corey Kluber on the mound, longtime member of our organization. He won a Cy Young here in Cleveland, so it'll be a fun opportunity to take on a Cleveland baseball legend as Cattell Barte's up in the top of the first inning for his first at bat as a Cleveland Guardian. Early count here is 3-1. Pitch away from Kluber. And this one isn't high. And pretty deep in a right field. It's got a chance at the track. And it's caught. That would have been awesome. As his first at bat as a Cleveland Guardian would have been a home run. If only. We're going to play a little defense as well. It's Aaron Savale on the mound here today for the Guardians against Yandy Diaz, who flies it into right center. Marte did not make a good angle on that ball. I'm not used to player locking on defense. I haven't played road to the show as an outfielder in probably a good five years at this point, so it took me a little time to get used to. Here we are now in the third 2-1 pitch. Marte grounds it to second. It looks like that'll be a double play. Not ideal. So Barte grounds into a 4-6-3 double play. Certainly not the at-bat he wanted there as we move to the bottom of the third. 1-0, runners on first and second, two away for Austin Meadows, who was also on the trade block with Cattell Marte. I thought Marte made more sense because the Rays were winning games, and Austin Meadows has multiple years left of team control. So that's why I ended up picking Marte over him, because it made more sense for Arizona to trade him. Into the fifth inning now, tied at one, runner on second, two away. Marte grounds it to third. Very underwhelming Cleveland debut for Cattell Marte as he's 0 for 3. We move into the 7th. The lefty is in, and it's going to be an intentional walk. Leave it to Kevin Cash to go with the analytical approach and intentionally walk Cattell Marte. Weak. If we're being real, though, that's probably not weak. If anything, it's probably the smart move because Marte rakes against lefties. And then, sure enough, Jose Ramirez strikes out in the following at bat. Marte would not get another opportunity in the game, and unfortunately, we would end up losing. So the Guardians do not get the victory here in Cattell Marte's debut and fall to the Tampa Bay Rays as Cleveland is now back under 500. Marte day did not go quite to plan as Marte goes 0 for 3 of a walk, and unfortunately, a great start from Savale is blown by the bullpen. So I would have played the home debut, which ironically is against the Diamondbacks, but I wanted to play this second game, get an opportunity to play against Zach Plezak. We ended up losing 1-0. Marte goes 1 for 3 of a walk, so not horrible. Cal Quantrill got the loss despite not allowing an earned run. Very unfortunate there as we make it to the second game of this Arizona series. So far, Cattell Marte is 0-2 in Cleveland. I think the Diamondbacks are 2-0 without him. So I guess Arizona is winning the trade so far, even though Zach Plezak has not pitched until today. Against Plezak will be his replacement, Carlos Vargas, making his major league debut. We'll see how that goes. He didn't allow any runs at the top of the first, so we go to the bottom half of the inning. Marte is up against Zach Plezak, the former guardian, as that one is flown out to right, caught for the first out of the inning by Jordan Luplo. We fast forward now to the second inning. Vargas is in a little bit of a jam with two on and two out here for Drew Ellis, who's going to fly this one into deep center. Cattell Marte under it, and he will make the catch. So Marte helps get Vargas out of the jam, and so far, Carlos Vargas is looking pretty solid in his debut. We move it to the fourth inning. one nothing Diamondbacks as it's Marte on the first pitch of the at-bat. With a bomb into right center field. Flint the bat, young man. That's a home run. Cattell Marte with his 18th home run of the year. First as a Cleveland Guardian against the guy he was traded for, Zach Plezak. Pretty funny as that one goes 430 feet. An absolute moonshot 
for Cattell Marte as the fans given him a loud and well-deserved ovation. The first of many home runs as a Cleveland Guardian for Cattell Marte. And I don't know if most of those home runs he's going to hit here are going to have as beautiful as a swing as that one was. We move to the fifth inning here. Please, Zach, kind of struggling as it's now 4-1. to one. Looks like he should be able to get out of this inning here as Marte grounds into a double play. So Marte is grounded into two double plays here in this episode. We move to the seventh inning. It's 4-2. to two. Corbin Martin is in the game for the Diamondbacks. 2-1, two, 2 out for Marte. Ooh, that was close. Low fastball. Looked like it was in the zone, but Cattell's going to get the call. Following pitch. 2-2. Two, two, he gets plunked. Looks like he got hit on the elbow. So Marte gets hit by the pitch. He's now aboard here for Jose Ramirez, who's going to line this one to second, flipped over to short. They get the force out at second, which ended up being Cattell Marte. But it's not going to matter as the Cleveland Guardians get the victory here. Cattell Marte's first win as a Guardian, and he certainly played an impact, hitting a big home run in the fourth inning to get the offense going. He ended up reaching base one more time, getting hit by a pitch. We scored all four of our runs in the fourth inning against Zach Plesak, who takes the loss. Good start for Carlos Vargas. He did not make it through four innings, however, and it's not necessarily his fault. It's not because he was on a pitch count or he was struggling. It's actually because he got injured. Carlos Vargas strained his oblique. It should probably not keep him out for his next start, which is good. So the final player lock game we're going to play here is against the Astros. We have a four-game set at home against them. The only lefty starter they have is Framber Valdez, and I wanted to play against the lefty because Cattell Marte rakes against lefties. So we ended up going 1-2. and two. We lost both of the first two games against the Astros, including a 17-8 loss in which Houston scored eight runs in the ninth inning. That's something. So we're going to hop into this third game here. We're losing the series 2-0, which is not ideal. So we're looking to get back in the win column here in a dreary day in Cleveland, Ohio. But the weather is good enough for some baseball as Cattell Marte faces off against the Houston Astros. Marte still hitting second. He hasn't done a whole lot since he hit that home run in the Arizona game. So, so far, he's been sort of underwhelming through five games. But you got to keep in mind, it's only five games. So here's Marte, full count here against Valdez, singles it into right field. So Cattell Marte is aboard. The first two runners reach safely for Cleveland. And that'll bring up Jose Ramirez, who's probably been the best hitter in baseball since the All-Star break. He has done nothing but mash bombs. This one stays in the ballpark, but it'll go for a single. I'm pretty sure Ramirez has like eight home runs since the All-Star break or something absurd. That single would drive in a run, so the Guardians now lead 1-0. Now it's 2-0 here in the bottom of the second. Runner on first here for Marte, who's going to hit this one nicely into right center field, and it goes off the wall. Marte rounding first, headed to second. It'll be a double run score, so it's an RBI double for Cattell Marte, and the Guardians are now winning 3-0. The offense is really coming in clutch, as that'll bring up Jose Ramirez looking to drive in another run. This one is singled up the middle. Marte on his horse, rounding third, headed home. It's going to be a close throw at the plate. And Marte is safe. Another RBI here for Jose Ramirez, who continues to dominate at the plate. His home run derby win was no fluke, let me tell you. We move to the fourth inning now. Two runners on the corners here for Marte, who swings at a pitch in the dirt. I think Cattell Marte got a little bit excited. He has a 99 clutch rating, so that means he does really well with runners on base. Added on to the fact that it's against the lefty, so I got a little trigger happy. We move to the sixth inning now. It's 6-0 here. Yusei Kikuchi, another lefty, is on the bump for Houston as it'll be an infield single for Cattell Marte. The shortstop was unable to make a play there. Former Minnesota twin, Jorge Polanco. So now Marte's going to look to steal second, but Ramirez puts it in play. It's high, it's deep, and it will be caught and left, so Marte's got to get back. This could be a double play. It's going to be close, and he is out. That was a good hustle by Cattell Marte, but... It really did not work out to plan. As you can see here, the Astros have one hit. Cal Quantrill is cruising right now, just dominating against this Astro lineup. We see we start the seventh defensively off strong. Jose Altuve flies out to center. When we played against the Astros earlier in the year, they scored 13 on us, and that was in Houston. So clearly the trash cans had to have had an effect on the game, right? They don't have the trash cans here on the road, and they have one hit. We move to the 8th inning here. Cattell Marte gets another base hit. Marte is 4 for 5 today. He's been very solid at the plate. Three singles, a double, an RBI, and a run. 
Count is 0-1. Marte is not going to steal here against Jose Ramirez. And instead, he's learned his lesson as this one is flown out to left. And you can tell Marte will retreat back to first. Two away now for the Franimal, Fran Mil Reyes. How do you think Reyes is feeling having Cattell Barte and Jose Ramirez right in front of him in the order? That's got to be really fun. Unfortunately, Reyes doesn't really capitalize there as he strikes out. Into the ninth inning now, still 7-0. Two away here for Alex Bregman. The final hope here for the Astros as he flies it into the right center. Marte under it. Good win here for the Cleveland Guardians. A complete game, one hitter from Cal Quantrill. You're not going to see many better pitching performances than this one. And Cal Quantrill is really on a roll. He's had his hot streaks and low streaks throughout the year, but right now he's pitching very, very well. The offense for us was good. Obviously, Marte made a big impact, as I said, four for five of a run and an RBI. But I feel like the bigger story today had to have been Cal Quantrill. One hit, two walks. He was very close to the perfect game, but unfortunately could not get it. We're going to simulate this last matchup against the Astros. We win five to one. It looks like Carlos Vargas had a good second start. So we enter today 500. We leave today. 500. I think we're going to get through the rest of August in the next episode. We have some fun games against Toronto and San Diego coming up. So there you go. The Cattell Marte era in Cleveland has begun. Let me know what you thought of the trade and the trade deadline as a whole down below. Do you like our moves? Do you like the addition of Cattell Marte? Make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.